One of the human body's most effective immune defenses are the constantly vigilant natural killer cells. Now, using stem cells, researchers at the Sanford Consortium for Regenerative Medicine are specializing these natural killers to specifically target cancer. The goal of our work at UC San Diego Stem Cell Program is to improve the human condition through new therapies, interventions, and hopefully outright cures. Here at the Sanford Consortium for Regenerative Medicine, Dr. Dan Kaufman is taking a giant step in that direction by using stem cells to help pioneer a strategy being used in a first-of-its-kind clinical trial anywhere in the world taking place at the UC San Diego Moore's Cancer Center. We were able to catch up with him to learn about this approach and what it could mean for the future of cancer treatment and perhaps cures. A good variety of things. Yeah. For more than 20 years, Dan Kaufman has worked as a physician to treat patients using cell-based cancer therapies, such as bone marrow transplantation. While still treating patients, he also leads a research group studying ways to improve cell-based cancer therapies for patients with otherwise incurable cancers by using stem cells to make these cell-based immunotherapies into safer, more standardized, off-the-shelf drugs. Clinicians have been doing bone marrow transplant as a form of essentially cell-based therapy for now over 50 years, primarily to treat blood cell cancers like leukemia, lymphoma, myeloma. So now really in the last decade or so, there's been a lot of interest in new cell-based therapies in the, the so-called so CAR T-cells or chimeric antigen uh, receptor expressing T-cells. CARs or chimeric antigen receptors have a receptor part that's made to specifically recognize a protein that's on tumor cells that's linked to a, essentially a signaling domain that when that cell sees that cancer cell, the cell becomes activated and it kills the cancer cell. It's a way to treat patients who would otherwise not have any other option. And again, has had some really spectacular results. And those are now um, so-called FDA approved, essentially clinical products that we can now order and give patients even though treatments for these blood cell cancers have improved and success for bone marrow transplant has improved over the last decades, there's still challenges. Even with the so-called CAR T-cell therapy, there's a lot of optimism around it. That's a cell therapy where it's a patient-derived therapy. You collect the patient's T-cells, they get engineered, which takes a few weeks, and then they're given back to the patient. Not every patient who could benefit from that therapy um, can successfully get CAR T-cell therapy. They might get too sick to wait the, the three weeks or so for that treatment. And there's been a lot of toxicity from the treatment. So even though this can cure, say, certain types of leukemia, a significant percent of patients may get sick or even die from toxicities of the therapy. The other you know, issue is the cost, because every patient is a made on a patient specific basis, the cost is somewhere between $300,000 and $500,000 for each patient manufacturing. And so a little bit in parallel, I've been working now for you know essentially 20 years using different stem cell populations. And over the past decade or so now, we've moved this into so-called iPS cells or induced pluripotent stem cells to not only look at early blood cell development, but what's been very successful is to make immune cells, and over the last few years, we've gotten very interested in a population called natural killer cells, or NK cells, which are part of your normal immune system. They're known to kill tumor cells. They kill virally infected cells. And now we're able to make very similar cells from pluripotent stem cells and to start to use those for clinical therapies. One of the interesting things and in, in why we've gotten so interested in the natural killer cells is these don't have to be patient-specific therapies. So NK cells work 
differently than T cells. So T cells, by and large, only work on your own cells. So my NK cells could kill your tumor cells or vice versa. So what that means is if we make these in the lab, we can essentially treat potentially any patient who could potentially benefit from a relatively small number of starting cell populations. We're working now to make hundreds or thousands of doses that can be used to treat wide numbers of patients. So you don't have to wait those weeks for, for therapy. And we also know from other trials of NK cells, we don't see the same toxicities. So we think that this can also be a safer therapy. So we've developed CARs for NK cells. They have a different set of activating receptors, but they recognize changes on different cells. So again, they can essentially recognize kind of these, I sort of think of as broad changes or differences between normal and, and tumor cells or virally infected cells. But if we want to make them more specific, we can use the same type of CARs where we use the same receptor mechanisms to target ovarian cancer, breast cancer, lung cancer, colon cancer, so on. We can use different receptors that would target that. So we've now developing these so-called IPS-derived CAR NK cells actually to specifically target different types of tumors. So we typically test the, the function of these different NK cells doing what we call tumor xenograft models. In this example, we're using ovarian cancer, which is a typically more resistant tumor. And we compared natural killer cells or NK cells from peripheral blood, which has been essentially the NK cell population that's been used for most NK cell clinical trials, which have been ongoing for at least 10 or 15 years. So we tested those peripheral blood NK cells to our IPS-derived NK cells in this ovarian cancer model and actually found that the IPS-derived NK cells work better in this system. We got deeper remissions and longer remissions, which I think was, was very exciting, very encouraging. I think this does give a lot of advantages, potentially compared to the cell therapy being done now. So we developed systems to make the natural killer cells. The system that we have now is really about three different stages. We maintain the undifferentiated cells. They grow for months or years as undifferentiated cells. The way that we use to differentiate them into hematopoietic progenitor cells is just by aggregating these cells in a dish. They make what are called embryoid bodies or maybe better called hematopoietic organoids. So these are little balls of cells that contain hematopoietic progenitor cells. We take those, we put them into a second culture system where those blood cells and the NK cells grow. So those will grow in sort of what we call the NK differentiation conditions for roughly three, four weeks. We get a, a good number of NK cells. And then if we want to make even more, we add additional cell population. This is a essentially feeder cell line or stimulator cell line that's been engineered to produce factors that are very good for NK cell conditions. And the NK cells will continue to expand for, again, kind of weeks or months. You know, it takes a few weeks, but we can get large numbers of cells and really kind of do this in a standardized manner. My view is, is kind of using the system to make cells more like drugs, right? So if you're taking an aspirin or whatever, everybody gets the same thing. It's very standardized and it's uniform, as opposed to, you know, in bone marrow transplant or CAR T cells now, everybody gets something a little bit different, right? So this is kind of a really unique in the cell therapy field that we can give everybody a standardized cell population. One of the advantages, again, if we can make essentially large scale, a standardized cell therapy like these IPS-derived NK cells, presumably that can be delivered in a more cost-effective manner. That would be uh, another potential benefit. Um, the other thing this allows us to do is to use this as essentially a platform to make genetic modifications to make the NK cells better. We can add other proteins to also enhance the function of the cell. So we can not only make regular NK cells, we can can make them more effective through these different modifications. There is interest in using these type of, of NK cells to kill other chronic virally infected cells. 
NK cells are known to kill virally infected cells. They kill some viruses better than others through adding these CARs or other mechanisms. We think we can use this to better target some of the more resistant viral disease as well. After, you know, working on blood cell development from pluripotent stem cells for 20 years and, and working with iPS cells and NK cells for about the, the past 10 years, we've actually developed collaboration for both research studies and started now clinical trials at Moore's Cancer Center and UC San Diego Health. This is the first iPS-derived cells in trials in the U.S., as well as the first iPS-derived blood cells and the first iPS-derived cancer therapy, as far as I know, done anywhere in the world. And we're developing a new clinical service, what we call cell and regenerative medicine service, to do more cell therapies um, really for solid tumors and, and potentially other diseases as well. We've been doing cell therapy for 50 years, but this is really getting to be, if not more and more mainstream, at least more and more part of a key role of, of especially cancer therapy and you know, potentially being used for other diseases as well. And so this is something that, again, we really want to continue to develop this program here and, and really be leaders in this field. We've already accomplished a lot to understand how to make these blood cells from human pluripotent stem cells, how to make immunotherapies. This is now just starting in clinical trials. This is still in early stages. So by five years, you know, hopefully we'll work with our partners to develop a quote-unquote off-the-shelf cell-based immunotherapy that can be given to wide numbers of patients to really not only treat but to potentially give long-term remissions or cures for these more difficult um, types of cancer. And I think that's been one of the real goals of all this type of cell-based therapy is how to move this into these more challenging solid tumors like lung cancer, breast cancer, colon cancer, brain tumors, and, and so on. This is an area that's going to continue to evolve. I mean, I don't expect we're going to have all the answers in five years. One of the analogies I often give people is sort of when I started my fellowship is when antibody-based therapies first started coming to, to clinic, this drug called rituximab. But it was like, oh, you know, there was a lot of challenges. How are we going to give this in the clinic? How are they going to make enough of this for all these patients who could, could benefit? There was a lot of sort of mystery about this antibody-based therapy. Now, 20 years later, there's literally dozens of antibody-based therapies that are, you know, FDA-approved. And we use these all the time routinely, you know, in the clinic. And I think importantly, you don't have to just come to a special tertiary care center like UC San Diego to take that type of therapy. You can go essentially anywhere in the world, any cancer clinic in the world is able to give these type of antibody-based therapies. Where I see cell-based therapy now is where we were with the antibody-based therapy 20 years ago. So it's gonna take time to figure out how to grow all these cells, what the optimal cells are gonna be for certain diseases or tumors. But, you know, I think over that time frame, you know, the, the hope is really to make this into, a, a, again, a, a standard routine therapy that we can use to treat, uh, you know, anybody who would benefit.